Hello, good to be here. My first time, really looking forward to it. Um, today I'm going to talk about how, I, how to identify powerful chart patterns for trading success. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself before we really get into the meat of this. Uh, not everybody is familiar with who I am, I imagine. Um, I actually started up not through the trading desk, if you will. I came up in technical analysis through the educational side. And I've gotten my education. I have a BA in mathematics from USC. I also have a master's of science in information resource management from the Air Force Institute of Technology. I have been studying the market for what, for over 22 years. In fact, when I was in high school, I used to help my dad calculate the on balance volume OBV in spreadsheets. So I've been watching the markets for quite some time, but I only really got into the the meat of it, if you will, about 22 years ago. I am a member of the CMT. I'm a level three candidate right now for the CMT, haven't found time to uh, finish that program. And I am a, a member of the International Federation of Technical Analysts, that association. I am at decisionpoint.com. So that's where you're gonna find all of my information. I am the vice president and the senior technical analyst for decisionpoint.com. I also can be found on stockcharts.com. I have a free blog, Decision Point blog, on stockcharts.com. And also, I'm pretty prominent on Stock Charts TV. Um, I've been consulting with Stock Charts for many years. Uh, it, it's been a great experience. I still am associated with them. I do host the Decision Point show with my father, Carl Swenlin, and Chartwise Women with Mary Ellen McGonigal. So let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm gonna talk about chart patterns. And I think a lot of people are familiar with chart patterns, but I wanted to really get more involved in the calculating of those targets and recognizing those patterns right off the bat. Because if you find a good bullish pattern, there are a lot of things you can do with it. Bearish patterns, of course, are your warning sign, or you could of course use it if you wanted to look for a shorting opportunity. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the signals and minimum downside and upside targets. And that also will help you with setting your stops by using those chart patterns. And of course, I always set an upside target in addition to a stop. I like to set my stops usually right around uh, support and resistance areas, but you'll find that using chart patterns, it can also help you with setting those stops in the right place. So I'm gonna first start off by talking about bullish chart patterns, and I'll probably spend more time on these just because you know, these are the ones that are more actionable. These are the ones you know, we're usually looking on the long side rather than the short side. So I'll really wanna spend a little extra time on these. Uh, of course, I'm gonna cover the triangles, uh, bull flag, the falling wedge, double and triple bottoms, uh, in addition, the cup and handle pattern and a V bottom. So those are all, you're seeing a lot of V bottoms actually. You know, we saw a ton of them coming out of the bear market low, but you still will, you still will run into these, uh, you know, as you go along. So let's go ahead and dive in. I've got lots of charts to talk about. Uh, if anybody is a stockcharts.com member, I can share this chart list with you. So just send me an email at aaron at decisionpoint.com and I can share all of these charts. You can have them in your own, um, in your own account at stockcharts.com. I'm gonna be watching the question box as I go along, but um, I can't promise that I'll get to them as, I, as I'm talking and, and concentrating on these charts. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the ascending triangle. These are continuation patterns, but they can also uh, be a reversal pattern. So these can show up at the bottom uh, of a, a move, but it can also happen in a move that's already going to the upside. And what you're looking for is the flat top and then rising bottoms. This tells you as you know, price is moving along that you're starting to see uh, more and more bullish activity going on. You don't have to go all the way down to test the previous level of support. And every time you come up, you get stuck at overhead resistance, but when you come down, you end up at a higher low than you had previously. 
And these patterns, you know, they don't often talk about minimum upside targets for these patterns, but you can calculate one. I call them back of the napkin calculations, but you take the back, the height of the back of these patterns, and then you add it to the top, and that gives you your minimum upside target. And I say minimum, and as you can see, the minimum upside target, this was about three handles, if you will, the minimum upside target was right about here. And of course, we blasted past that. And usually when you get these really nice bullish chart patterns, you're gonna find that uh, most of the time they do execute the way you expect them to. But I have to say, you know, you can't count on them necessarily. So that's why I like to use my price momentum oscillator. This is the PMO, some may or may not have heard of it. It is decision points version of the PPO or MACD, it measures momentum and it's a different calculation. Um, I helped my father come up with it. I did the algebra for him. For him. He uh, figured out the, the concept of what he really wanted to capture. And, uh, you know, it's a great indicator. We find it to be a lot better than the MACD and the PPO. And I invite you to go to stockcharts.com and check out Chart School and you will find the price momentum oscillator right there. All right, so this was the first bullish pattern. So if we were to set an upside target, like I said, we could do that calculation and that would have set us up right about here. At that point, we would have wanted to check, okay, what's going on with momentum? How much longer can this move continue higher? And really, you know, the momentum was going up as soon as we broke out of this pattern. You can see that the PMO just ticked right up as soon as we broke out and it continued on its way. But you can see right about here, it started to flatten out, even though price was starting to move higher as we see it here. So that was really a great indication that you might wanna consider um, leaving because you've already hit that upside target. So that's one of the reasons I like to set those upside targets so that I know when I get in there, I need to recheck and see how everything's going. Um, but in any case, even if you had gotten caught in this big breakdown, you still would have made a pretty nice amount of money. And you had the PMO pretty much confirming the fact that uh, you don't wanna do this one anymore. All right, the symmetrical triangle. Now these, you know, you have, it uh, comes to an apex. So you've got that triangle look and these patterns are actually uh, continuation patterns, typically. They can break in either direction, uh, but typically they're gonna break in the same direction as what the trend was going into it. And, you know, typically you're looking for about a three week plus duration that, that forms this triangle. Um, but, I, you know, the timing, you know, if you're looking at a different chart, you know, if you're looking at a weekly chart, that's not gonna hold true. It will, it'll be on the plus side. If you're looking at a, a closer intraday chart, obviously it, it'll be more like a three-day duration. So just depending on what chart you're looking at, just keep that in mind as far as the length of the pattern. But really for most patterns, you wanna have the touches, two, at least two touches with each of the trend lines that you're drawing. So as you can see, this one did end up breaking down the way it was supposed to. Uh, as far as targets for symmetrical triangles, you could use that back of the napkin, you know, testing, you know, measuring the height of that pattern in the back and use that as your minimum downside target. But typically with symmetrical triangles, I, I don't use those measurement factors quite so much. But um, so we're looking at one right now. This is a bullish pattern, but uh, this is a this one, you can see that it broke down instead of breaking higher. I probably should have put a more bullish looking chart in here. All right, the bull flag. I think a lot of people are familiar with this one, but not everybody understands the calculation on how you can uh, set those minimum upside targets. These patterns, really, they do tend to break the direction that uh, we want. Uh, they are continuation, like I said, so you're continuing the uptrend. Here's that consolidation, that, that time of distribution and indecision. But once you get that breakout, you can see how all of the accumulation that was going on as soon as you broke out. Now, of course, the question is, you know, broke out, it didn't hit its minimum upside target. 
you measure the top of the you measure the flagpole that's how you can determine your upside target so don't pay so much attention to the percentages i was mainly doing it just to give us a pretty nice match so that you can see what these targets are so this one you could see that the upside target would came in right about here um, the issue was of course we broke out and then we had that pullback that brought us really back down to the level of this flag and that was uh, probably a sign of mm, we might not want to stick around on this one uh, hadn't made that upside target <clears throat> but we did eventually make it and had I had a stop set here based on this pattern I probably would have taken it I usually look at the pattern and I take about half of that pattern to determine my stop level and that's something that people don't really think about with these chart patterns that you can use them to help you set your stop levels. So in this case, half of this pattern, it would have put me right about here for my stop level. So I wouldn't have actually been stopped out. And you know, I could have, I could have hung out while the, the momentum was moving lower, or I could have chosen to get out and then re-enter when I got that buy signal. But the pullback, you know, it was very constructive. When we lost the 50-day EMA, of course, that was probably our signal that uh, we might not see what we want. But you can see, and I'm giving you a peek right now at a double bottom right here. So we came off of this decline. We had the two lows here. It, it forms like a W shape. Confirmation line is right there at the middle of that W. And we measure the pattern the size of the pattern and that would give us another upside target if you will and that would have put us right about here at that overhead resistance level so i would have set my upside target off of this pattern that way and you could see that when we came off of the second bottom on that double bottom when we started to make our move up right when we broke out you can see that the price momentum oscillator had just given us a buy signal so more than likely right our confidence level should be higher and we certainly did get the move past that upside target and we ended up coming back and eventually filling the upside target from that original flag all right the descending triangle or falling wedge these are great patterns and we see these a lot uh, i i run into these pretty much uh, every day uh, they're really great patterns. Uh, I, I see them break the, the direction they're supposed to quite often. Um, really, you're getting the, the idea of this pattern is that you have that wider range to begin with. And then as you start traveling down, you start to see a little bit of a higher low than the previous uh, time. And then you, you basically are you're getting that declining um, trend right here. You can see it. But you can see that it starts to pinch as we get closer to the end of that pattern. So these typically are reversal patterns. Uh, they, I say reversal because we're moving in a downtrend into this pattern. The pattern is moving down. And so it is actually um, a reversal, right? It's reversing this current downtrend. We got a nice pop uh, out of the pattern and we continued higher. And again, if you wanted to measure a target, you can use the backside of this pattern and add it to the breakout point, which would have put us you know, pretty much right about here. Usually it comes up to around that resistance level at the start of the pattern, but we could see on that big br breakout, that gap up, you know, we had a nice continuation here and it led to a really nice uh, rally in the longer term. That doesn't necessarily always happen, but Again, and now here you can see the PMO had been moving lower, lower, lower. It started to bottom right in here. So we already had that hint that we might get that breakout finally from this particular chart pattern, that falling wedge. All right, the bullish double bottoms. You know, if you go back to the S&P in 2015 and 2016, uh, there are a lot of examples here of double bottoms and, you know, double bottoms are, are quite handy, I find, uh, because they, they really, they give you that a very clear understanding of what they are. It looks like a big W and you get those confirmation lines and you get a really nice measurement opportunity. 
with these double bottom patterns. So in this first one, there's your double bottom. You had a higher low here. The PMO was confirming it, right? Higher low on the PMO. We didn't quite get the confirmation from on balance volume on this one, but um, having that PMO uh, giving us that rising bottoms to confirm pretty much the rising bottoms that are coming in here on that double bottom. So we measure the height of the pattern and you add it to the breakout point, which is right there in the middle, and that gives you your upside target. And funny enough, it actually fulfilled the way it was supposed to. It didn't quite make the top of that minimum upside target, but it, you know, we had that really great run. Then things started to get a bit messy here. Then we came back down into an even lower low, and then we formed another double bottom. Confirmation line, measurement of the height, add the height to the breakout point, and this was our minimum upside target which we did end up hitting a few months later. Um, and again, you have the PMO right here to give you that confirmation. These lows right here are about the same, if not this one being just a little tiny bit lower. So we had rising bottoms on that PMO and we had lower bottom here on the double bottom. So we got a confirmation even as we started to make our move up here because we'd already formed that second low, which was higher on the PMO. So really nice breakout formation, like to see these. And again, you can set that minimum upside target. That's when you start to make that decision. Do I wanna keep in, in this particular issue or do I want to make my um, exit? And as you can see, I mean, everything was looking fairly positive once you hit that minimum upside target, but if you looked at what was going on with the PMO, it had already started to flatten out here in overbought territory. So you got the hint that it might be time to leave um, just based on the, the way the momentum had started to flatten just a bit here at the top. And sure enough, we did end up getting the breakout instead of the breakdown. But ultimately, it turned out if you had gotten out right here, on that PMO flattening and meeting that minimum upside target, you'd have probably been a lot safer. Certainly if you hung out long enough, you'd be up here and uh, continuing to ride. But ultimately we're trying to make a successful trade. It doesn't necessarily mean a buy and hold. Uh, most of these are, are relatively short term in nature, depending on what chart you're looking at, of course. Um, I did get a question here. How is a falling wedge different? And I'm guessing from the symmetrical triangle. Uh, let me go back a little bit here. If I can get back to here. Let's go back. All righty, the falling wedge. There you go. Um, the falling wedge is different from a symmetrical triangle because both of these trend lines are pointed downward. So you know, with the symmetrical triangle, the bottom needs to be rising bottom. So that's the main difference between the two. Um, and again, the symmetrical triangle tends to be a continuation pattern, whereas you can see with the falling wedge, a lot of times that'll come in the, at a top and it'll be moving down and it reverses that downtrend with that breakout. Great question. What is the PMO? The PMO is the price momentum oscillator. It's a decision point uh, exclusive indicator. You can only find it right now, I believe, on stockcharts.com. Uh, it, it does mimic the MACD and the PPO. If you, if you were to chart both of them together, you find that they react very similarly. Only sometimes the PMO does tend to either hit the move early or it doesn't fake you out. It stays in a buy signal uh, longer than say the PMO or the, the PPO does. All right, we talked about the double bottom. All right, the cup and handle. Um, this one I've noticed isn't in a lot of the textbooks. Um, this one is something that I, I'm guessing that mostly traders figured out. You can tell in this cup and handle, and this is actually a um, chart right from March 1st, if I recall. Let me see here, yep, indeed. Um, you can see it kind of looks like a double bottom as well, but you had this drop back here. So really what we're looking for is that rounded bottom sort of shape, and then you get the pullback after it comes out and then it breaks down. 
And that's usually your fake out point. That's where you start to lose investors as you start to come back down. Many times you will come down below um, the, the middle of that pattern, as you can see, we are right here. But once you watch again, you're watching this PMO, correct? And it's been rising all the way out through here. And then you come back and we start to see the downtrend, correct? But right about here, when we, even once we've broken down, we've broken down, oops, let's get back. We've broken down, you can see, and yet the PMO was still holding above its signal line. And then it started to head back up as we came out and got back above this area of resistance. And then of course we had the breakout, the PMO continued to confirm that, and we got the rise. We ended up with some consolidation here. You can almost draw a symmetrical triangle here, with the rising bottoms and some declining lows right here. Uh, and you would have gotten that continuation, like we were saying, on the breakout. What I'm pointing out here, because this is a new chart, and I just pulled it out today, uh, you can see that we did, or actually yesterday, you can see we have what could be a head and shoulders uh, bearish pattern developing but I'll talk about the bearish patterns later, but just something to keep an eye on there. One of the things, um, since I have this chart up, one of the things that people forget about as far as a quote unquote reversal pattern, you have to be reversing something. So if you came up here and you wanted to call this a double bottom, it's not really quite one, but if you wanted to, it, it really isn't one because it's coming off of a price rise and double bottoms are reversal patterns. Cup and handles are reversal patterns. You're going to expect them to break to the upside. Um, the PPO, which I don't have on this chart, is the uh, percent price oscillator, I believe. It's the percentage. It basically normalizes the MACD and turns it into a zero to 100 um, indicator. Uh, and so that's what people will oftentimes use. And again, it looks very similar to the PMO. All right, the V bottom. And like I said, we're seeing a lot of these. You can see I didn't uh, bring in the rest of the chart here, but you can see, and we all know that uh, we had a start way up here. And then that really that terrible drop, we had that quick de descend uh, descending into the abyss of the bear market, but of course we did come back out of it, but you get these Vs, you know, when you get that, you hit the bottom and then immediately you just start moving up rather quickly. Um, when you see these Vs, the way you can determine whether this pattern is actually triggering is once you start to see the V, you watch for it to retrace one third of the original part of the pattern. So that was right about here, right where we starting to see some consolidation, a little indecision. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna um, break out above the 50? Well, again, we had a lot of hints here. Number one, we had this pattern developing and we had gone well over a third of that pattern where it started. That was right about here where we hit it. And then you can see what was going on with the PMO. So obviously it, it made its turn it hit the buy signal right here. So it was early. And you can see that after that signal hit, we did get out and continue the right side of this V. And the expectation of a V isn't just that it will go to the top of the previous high here. The V bottom suggests that once you get the breakout and that retracement, you're not only gonna get to the top of this pattern, but you're likely going to see prices even higher than that. I usually consider um, looking at about a third of the, of the height of this pattern as the minimum upside target when you get to this point here. So that would have given us, uh, let's see, an upside target right around here, which is where we have hit. So uh, another one that, you know, combining your your momentum oscillator, whatever momentum you want to use. I'm not going to say that the PMO is the only one you can use. Uh, like I said, MACD is, is one you could use as well, but you want to consider the momentum as well as just the chart pattern, just to give you that confirmation that things are going the way you want them. All right, so let's get into some bearish chart patterns. The descending or symmetrical triangle, we'll talk about that one. 
and then we're going to look at a rising wedge and this is prevalent um, all over the place in fact we have a rising wedge right now on the spy as we're rising if you go to to uh, decisionpoint.com uh, and of course you can subscribe to our um, newsletters there and we do talk a lot about the rising wedge that we currently have on the SPY and it's it's quite lengthy it's it's a pretty long um, intermediate term pattern right now and because it is bearish we are expecting that to break down meaning of course that the S&P will break down bear flag basically the reverse of the bull flag we'll look at that double and triple top. So we looked at the double and and uh, I didn't show you a triple uh, bottom, but they, they do exist. Um, double and triple tops. I found a really nice triple top I'll show you. The head and shoulders pattern, which I think most people are familiar with. I have to say though, of all of the patterns, the head and shoulders pattern is probably my least favorite. Um, it, it doesn't always, you will usually get that downside move, that execution of the pattern, but typically I find that you don't hit those minimum downside targets all that much. You get the breakdown, but you you know, you're generally not gonna, I wouldn't short on a head and shoulders, let's put it that way. Mm. All right, so the other bearish chart pattern would be the broadening pattern or a megaphone. Again, this is one that uh, people don't necessarily talk about a lot, but I think is important. And then finally, uh, the parabola parabolic moves. These are all over the place right now. Um, these are those runners that you get where they just, the, they increase their, um, their, they ascend so quickly. And then of course, those typically break down because you know, most stocks aren't going to be able to continue in a vertical type move. I mean, we've even seen that in Bitcoin. Alrighty. All right. For more information on the PMO, because I am getting some questions about it, if you go to stockcharts.com and you click on Chart School, which is near the top, and you can just type in Price Momentum Oscillator, you'll get all of the information you could ever want about the PMO, including its calculation. If you wanted to uh, somehow, you know, um, put that in your own charting program. All right, so let's start off with a descending triangle. So you remember the ascending one had the flat top and rising bottoms. This is just the opposite. Instead, you have a flat bottom and then declining tops. And the expectation, of course, of these patterns is a breakdown. Measurement of the back of the pattern, adding to the breakdown point gives you your minimum downside target. And interestingly, we didn't know what happened over here, but interestingly, notice that fell right on um, significant support uh, at this low and at this top. So, you know, when you see that, to me, it's, it's, uh, it tells me that I, I, there's more than likely gonna be um, the right kind of breakdown here because that support level is gonna need to be tested. And sure enough, we did end up with a breakdown here on this uh, descending triangle. And you can see if we were to look at what the PMO was telling us at the time, even as we were pretty much moving sideways to some degree, you can see that the PMO was starting to tend towards zero. And when we got to the breakdown right back here, uh, you can see how the PMO just started to accelerate downward. So you knew you were in trouble at that point. If you didn't already know on that first decline and breakdown from the bottom of this particular pattern. The ascending wedge opposite that falling wedge that we looked at, um, rising wedge is also what you'll hear me talk about in my decision point alert and decision point diamonds reports. You are looking, these are continuation patterns or a reversal pattern, so they can pretty much come anywhere. Um, the expectation of these rising wedges is a breakdown. And like I said, um, if I have time, I'll try and show you that uh, chart that I have of the S&P's rising wedge, but it's looking pretty ugly. Um, and so you're expecting that breakdown. Sure enough, that's what we saw. And again, you can use the momentum just to give you that hint that yes, when we got this breakdown, we got the sell signal. So we were likely gonna see price continue lower, which we did. Exxon Mobil, this is a reverse flag, very similar to the bull flag, only of course we turn it upside down. The length of the flagpole gives you 
the measurement of the pattern and then you just look at the breakdown point and then you take that same measurement lower and that gives you your minimum downside target. Uh, in this case, you know, as we came here, we had that PMO cell signal. We started to consolidate here, but the PMO was not interested in turning back around. So you already knew you still had things very, um, you know, they, they just really weren't set up right. And more than likely, you were going to get that breakdown that was expected. Here's your bearish double top. Um, pretty simplistic here, high to the pattern confirmation line, minimum downside target. Of course, we did end up hitting that. Um, you could even make a case maybe for a triple top here with that third top. Again, this is the S&P um, during that 2015-16 area where we had quite a few chart patterns. I'm even seeing a V bottom back here. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty soon when you start studying these patterns, you see them everywhere. All right, the triple top which is right here and you can see this one is on IBM you've got the yeah the triple top here and again there's your confirmation line you could also look at this as a rectangle maybe um, formation but the triple top was just so obvious on this particular chart I had to to use it for that for sure so you can see the height of the pattern and then again, we, we subtract that height to give us our confirmation. There's the confirmation, you get the breakdown. This is the minimum downside target, and it did turn out to be minimum. And again, here you have the PMO. It's pretty much telling you, even as we're moving sideways here, it continues lower. So you really do have the, um, the understanding that this is probably not gonna go well. Here's that head and shoulders pattern. Like I said, everybody's fairly, familiar with this there's your head left shoulder right shoulder and then you draw your neckline at here's the left shoulder and it drops that's the start of your neckline right here right before the right shoulder develops that's the other line you use for your neckline in this case it's rising neckline sometimes they'll be evenly spaced sometimes they'll be um, moving a little bit lower the idea is that you should expect a breakdown when you start to come back down toward the neckline. These are only reversal patterns. Don't look for these at the bottom of a decline. They're, they're not gonna be a, a true head and shoulders there. They should come up off of a rise. And here you go, as I said, here's the height of the pattern. The minimum downside target was way down here. We did get the breakdown, but it never really um, hit that downside target. And here you go, the PMO I think was giving you the hint as it turned, even though price was moving sideways, you could see it was already starting to improve and likely this pattern was now gonna be busted. Here's that megaphone that I wanted to talk to you about. I only have a few more minutes. Uh, the broadening pattern you end up with, it looks like a megaphone. I think it's pretty obvious. These are bearish patterns um, because you're starting to see more and more volatility as you go along. And so, you know, the expectation is eventually you're going to break down from this megaphone pattern unless you start to see um, more manageable um, price action, something that isn't quite so volatile, moving you back and forth. But typically, I like to stay away from stocks that are showing a megaphone. Here is the parabolic. And I borrowed this chart from my father. This is Apple. It's a monthly chart but it really shows you how parabolics work. Parabolics are very dangerous. And you know the thing is, is that when you're in one, you wanna stay in it. You don't wanna lose out, right? You wanna take advantage of the vertical um, price move that you have. Um, but the problem is, is that when they break down, they usually break down very quickly and you don't have a lot of time. You, know, you can see right in this, this point here, it was in two months, it just broke all the way back down to its basing pattern. And that's what you look for. You get the parabolic, it breaks down and you look for it to hit right around where its previous base was. Um, Apple is in another one right now. Um, and we would expect to see it come here and eventually it's gonna break. So what do you do to protect yourself from a parabolic? I always recommend a trailing stop on these because again, um, you wanna take advantage of every move to the upside, but make it trailing because when these break down, they break down quickly and quite 
painfully. All right, so set, setting the stops using those chart patterns. I think I gave you pretty much a, an idea of how to do that. You know, you recognize the pattern, you look at your targets, and that gives you that uh, measurement so you know the height of the pattern, so that's gonna help you set your, um, your stop levels. What I met, um, met, what I would, <laughs> excuse me, what I look for is um, with setting my stops and targets, I wanna look, of course, at support and resistance. I typically don't use an ATR or any um, formula like that. I'm, I'm a visual person. Um, I look for the support and resistance. Half the height of the pattern. So if we were looking at, for example, let's find one for us. Well, I'm gonna show you an example. I have two real-time real examples next. <clears throat> So here I had to give you something that looks good that you might want to go and check out for your own investment purposes. We have a really nice double bottom right now on Generation Bio. We've gotten the breakout above the confirmation line and we know our minimum upside target is right about here, right at about gap resistance. So I like the look of this one. The PMO is confirming the breakout. If I were to set my stop, for example, if we come out here, you could set it at half the halfway down into the pattern. In this case, it's a little bit um, that that's a little bit long because you can see from here down to there is 11.2 percent. But you can still set the stop now that we're looking at this today, right about just below that support level is what I'd be looking for. And then finally, here is uh, the busted double top. And I wanted to talk about busted patterns, especially busted bearish patterns when they bust and you get the move um, to the upside. So we had this double dot bottom forming, we were coming down, never quite got to the confirmation line and instead formed a bullish falling wedge and is now broken out of it. So when you get a, the busted bearish pattern, that's typically especially bullish. So in this case, not only did we get the busted pattern, but we also see the breakout there of the, the falling wedge. So I think this one's looking good, Beezer Homes. All right, that pretty much finishes it up for me. I wanted to let everybody know I do have a free live trading room that I do on Mondays. And I give you all of these examples. Um, I take your symbol requests and we look at, you know, real time. What chart patterns are there? What stop levels should we look at? What are the entry uh, points? So I recommend you go, just go to decisionpoint.com. Um, sign up for our free newsletter and you will get all the information you need to register for this. It is a recurring room, so you only have to register once. I also, of course, have two publications that I offer on my website, decisionpoint.com. I have the DP alert that gives you pretty much in 10 minutes every day, seriously, 10 minutes. You can read through it. You know exactly what the trend and condition of the stock market is. I cover dollar, gold, oil, and bonds. It's billed monthly. And Decision Point Diamonds is where I take the information I've gotten from the DP alert, what the, you know, what is our, um, you know, what's the environment? And I offer you 15, it says five, but I offer you 15 stock picks per week in this particular um, uh, publication. And additionally, this one also includes a trading room for subscribers only that I do on Friday mornings. Um, I'm going to offer you a really great deal, of course. If you just want to try us out, you can use the coupon code DPTRIAL, You'll get two weeks. Uh, I have all of my reports archived for you, so you can go back and see how I've done. And then if you want to just go ahead and take the plunge, use this coupon code and you're going to get some serious savings here. Currently, the DP alert is 40. You'll get that for 32. And the DP diamonds are $50 a month, mainly because I do have four <laughs> trading rooms for my subscribers included in that. And you can get that now for $40 a month using that coupon code March 2021. This is just for those watching this presentation. It'll be good for a month. You can get in there and take advantage of that. And that really is all I have, Dave. So I'm going to just pass it back to you. I know you've got somebody else just sitting and waiting in the wings. If anybody does want to get a hold of me, you can contact me, erin at decisionpoint.com. 
Like I said, if you're a StockCharts.com member and you wish to um, get my chart list, just send me an email and I'll set that up for you.